This is the Brother Henry and You Show, where you can be inspired, uplifted, and edified through the Word of God. Now enjoy today's program. God bless you. Welcome to the Brother Henry and You Show. This is your host, Brother Henry Harris, and I pray what will be said today will enrich your life. Dr. Larry Love called me a few days ago. He had asked uh, that he would get a group of uh, ministers together to talk about unity, which of course I was very excited about the way because I believe the body of Christ needs to be unified. Today I have with me on the program Brother Jeff Clark, Dr. Larry Love, and Mitch Clay. What an honor it is to have all of you on the broadcast today. Today's theme is going to be rising from being disconnected to connected. And my first question I would like to ask, and I guess we'll start with Dr. Larry Love, what does unity look like? Wow, well first of all, it's just great that we're here. We planned on having some more uh, ministers on this panel so uh -huh. we could get a, a, a broader perspective of this. Uh, and I think I speak for Mitch and Jeff, uh, certainly for myself, we're not experts, mm -hmm. but we do know what the Bible says, and uh, uh, we have some understanding of what Jesus taught about unity, and so we want to share that today, and hopefully uh, uh, people will receive some insights so they can practice this. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, there is much division in the body of Christ, okay. now, and, and Mitch and I have traveled to, to other nations been in a, a lot of places. Jeff has preached in a number of churches. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of sectarianism, you know, and, and uh, we're, we're the group. You know, Paul said to the church at Corinth even, he said, I couldn't speak to you as unto spiritual people. Mm -hmm. But carnal, the word is really meathead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, he says, you're like natural people, unsaved people. But your babes in Christ, though. They were in Christ, but they were babies. And he, and here's the reason. He said, because there is division, strife mm -hmm. among you. And that was, of course, the local church in Corinth. Now today, in each local church, and then among local churches, there's this competition, jealousy, and fighting. So uh, I want to give my, my brothers here uh, uh, just you know, opening remarks would kind of shoot back and forth. Mm -hmm. But if I may, Henry, I'd like to, to read uh, Psalm 133, verses 1 through 3. Sure. Okay. And uh, it says, Behold how good and how pleasant mm -hmm. it is for brethren, and that includes the sister, and I mean the sisters, <laughs> To dwell together in unity. It is like precious oil upon the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garments. It is like the dew of Hermon, descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Mm -hmm. So by God's spirit and God's grace and the revelation uh if we can come together, I believe, even though we're blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ as a believer, I believe there is a special blessing and that this Old Testament psalm is still in effect that God will command a special blessing when we dwell in unity. And just one more thing, and, and I'll turn the mic over to whoever here, but uh, you can have false unity. Talk about that a little. Okay, the Tower of Babel was a good example. Uh -huh. They were unified, and they were building a tower for them, mm -hmm. for their namesake, right? Mm -hmm. And God said, because you're unified, nothing's impossible to you. The Nazis' evil philosophy uh, wanted to do, you know, genocide, do away with all the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. It was evil. But they were united, you know. They probably fought with one another, but their cause was united under Hitler. Mm -hmm. Evil. So, uh, 
with us as believers. Number one, we cannot have unity unless all of us as individuals declare and walk in that Jesus is Lord, King, mm -hmm. Savior. He's the head. Mm -hmm. Two, we can't have true spiritual unity unless we have love. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, this world's going to know you're my disciples, not by your gifts, mm -hmm. not by your doctrine, but by your love one for another. So, uh, you know, this is a vast, broad subject, and uh, I want to turn this uh, mic over to Mitch. We have been, by the way, you're, you're here Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. We've been in a conference called uh, Kingdom Connection mm -hmm. Conference, mm -hmm. and there's been an emphasis on the kingdom of God and in that connecting, mm -hmm. coming together, mm -hmm. and... Uh, uh, Mitch just got through preaching a tremendous message, and, and Brother Howie uh, Thursday night, and then uh, Ryan Sutton and Brother Jeff is preaching tonight. So I'm just going to turn this over to Mitch, and he's, uh, I know he's got a lot of insight. This is a, a servant. He loves Jesus. He loves people, and uh, I know he's going to have a lot to contribute here. Amen. Well, thanks. That was nice. <laughs> I'm in it. <laughs> <clears throat> I my take on unity is a little different than most. Um, I appreciate people, uh, organizations, uh, ministerial alliances, different groups mm -hmm. that want to uh, rally the a city or town or region, whatever, mm -hmm. and bring people into unity. And I I agree with what Larry was saying. I believe there's many reasons for unity. Mm -hmm. A common enemy will bring unity. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you you and I, Henry, don't get along. We don't. Okay. <laughs> I actually just met Henry. So we, don't, we haven't had any opportunities to get crosswise with each other. But uh, let's just say, for example, we don't get along. But Larry becomes our common enemy. Suddenly now, we, as enemies, become unified because we have a common uh, threat against mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. So we will join forces, we'll lay aside our differences, we'll lay aside that which has separated us mm -hmm. for the cause of coming against another enemy. So, that's unity. Mm -hmm. But it, but is that true unity? Good question. See, the, see <laughs> you're supposed to be the one answering the, <laughs> asking the question. <laughs> I think we need to understand what Bible unity mm -hmm. uh -huh. See, you can just say the word unity... And there's lots of ideas that come into your mind. And lots of examples of them. You can yeah. back it all up with all kinds of examples. Mm -hmm. But what I want to talk about, in my portion of this, yes. is that I want to talk about what Bible unity looks like. Mm -hmm. And what is Bible unity in the church. Mm -hmm. Okay, then of course we have to understand what is the church. So I'll, I'm just briefly going to touch that. Mm -hmm. The church is the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. The last verses of Ephesians chapter 1 talks about Jesus being the head mm -hmm. of the body, which is the church. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the church are made up of the members mm -hmm. of his body. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the church is not the little building on the corner with the white steeple. Mm -hmm. That's just where the, some of the church might gather at certain times. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's not the church, but the people yeah. are the church. Amen. See, the church can gather anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, you can gather outside. You can yeah, gather absolutely. in a building. You can gather under a tree, whatever. But that, 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 so that distinction needs to be made. So then once we understand that, then we need to understand what is unity. Well, the scripture tells us in Ephesians chapter 4, and I believe it's in Romans chapter 5, uh -huh. uh, that, or actually it's Romans chapter 12, that we, as we come into Christ, mm -hmm. we are joined with Christ. Mm -hmm. And if we're joined with Christ then we're joined with all those that are in Christ as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I believe you're a Christian man. Yeah, I guess I am. You are, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so because you... I'm, I'm sorry. It's, it's fine. Because you've come into Christ, okay, uh -huh. even though I don't know you, I just met you actually a few minutes ago, mm -hmm. because you're in Christ and I'm in Christ, the scripture says that we are members one of another. So, even though you and I don't know each other, mm -hmm. we know each other very, very briefly, mm -hmm. 
we actually are members one of another, be, and Christ is the unifying factor. Yes. He's and the it, body, it, right. He is he's the head mm -hmm. of the body, that's right, and we make up his body. So, what that that's not just a theory or a concept, that's a reality. Mm -hmm. In the Spirit, you and I are joined together by the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. into Christ. Mm -hmm. So, the way I see unity is... That the church of Jesus Christ is unified right now. Mm -hmm. It's a reality. Mm -hmm. It's a reality. Mm -hmm. We don't need to have people gather in a stadium somewhere and sing the same song and, <laughs> and then say we're unified. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, you're unified until you all get in your cars and go home. <laughs> yeah. Then all that unity breaks up, right? Uh -huh. If you, if you, you know, ascribe to that theory mm -hmm. but, and that concept. But in my, in my understanding of the scripture, in my uh, revelation of what Jesus is, is died for, mm -hmm. is that, this is Ephesians chapter 2 now, mm -hmm. that the middle wall of separation will be taken away mm -hmm. and the two have become one. Mm -hmm. There's no more Jew, there's no more Gentile, there's no more male, there's no more female. We become one yeah. in Christ. Yeah. And as you're in Christ and I'm in Christ, we are unified. Why is it important, Dr. Larry Love, that the body of Christ connects? Why is that important? Well, uh, going back again to the Tower of ba Babel, or Babel uh, it's because it creates power. Mm -hmm. It creates uh, ability. Mm -hmm. You can, uh, Jesus said it this way, a house divided against itself will not stand. Mm -hmm. That's true in the home. That's true in the business arena. Mm -hmm. And it's true in the church. Mm -hmm. Church splits. Mm -hmm. uh, disagreement over eschatology. Mm -hmm. So there is enormous strength and power. Together we stand. United we stand. Mm -hmm. Divided we fall. Mm -hmm. I believe, and I want to say this, that I agree totally with Mitch, that positionally mm -hmm. we are already there. Every born-again believer mm -hmm. is one with Christ. Mm -hmm. We are one. We are his body. That's positional and that's truth. Mm -hmm. But the manifestation of that and the practical side of that on earth mm -hmm. is where we're not walking in that revelation. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's like uh, I cut off my arm. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Disconnected from my body. So it's going to hinder me, although thank God for people that have had legs and arms, you know, from from the war and, and everything. I, I just admire them and inspire them. They just keep going. But the point is that you, you don't function mm -hmm. as well, even though you can make it and you can do things. And I'm all, you know, all for that. So uh, uh, the devil, his one of his tactics, but not even of his devices, is to sneak in mm -hmm. and, and over stupid stuff. Like if you're in a building where the church meets, why didn't you put red carpet down <laughs> rather than blue carpet? Give me a break. How stupid is that? How juvenile, I'm sorry, I'm getting, how juvenile, <laughs> how ridiculous. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's one thing to have some serious issues mm -hmm. you disagree on and might you know, divide over. Like Paul and Barnabas, yeah. mm -hmm. they actually even had a division. Later they forgave one another, but they they were uh, divided over John Mark, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. In fact, it says they didn't have, it wasn't a small argument. They were really disputing with one another, okay? I mean, they, they had flesh just like anybody else. So, uh, uh, <clears throat> If the if if the whole church say in in America, we talk about universal church, but let's let's say okay, the whole church in America, all the true believers, 
if we uh, would grow to the place where we love one another mm -hmm. and we walk into what Mitch said, what's already been um, bought for us and established in the spirit, in the invisible realm, we could turn America completely around because the destiny of America doesn't, uh, isn't just with, you know, government and the world and education as important as those things might be. The destiny of America lies with God's people. Mm -hmm. And when we are so uh, uh, divided and uh, disconnected, we, we have stopped the greater power and flow. What causes? Does that make sense? Yeah, we don't yeah. have a lot of time to open this up and elaborate on this, but let's uh, yeah. let's let Mitch uh, yeah, go. go here. The reality of what the Scripture says about the church and the unit, unity of mm -hmm. the church, mm -hmm. us being members one of another, although that might not be manifested, yeah. the truth is, is what I want to say, is that somebody has to begin to walk ah. like it's true. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You see... That's a good point. You see, I, uh, I have no idea what your doctrine is. I don't know what you believe, what you don't believe. I know you believe Christ, okay? Mm -hmm. So I can, I can relate to you based on Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, salvation is a, that's a non-issue. I mean, we have to... Salvation is... The, fun, the foundation of the foundation. We have to have that established. Amen. There's only one Savior. Amen. It's Christ. Amen. He is the only answer. He's the only name by which man can be saved. So that's not a, a point of discussion. Mm -hmm. But most of everything above that is, you know, we, we can have a lot of difference, mm -hmm. but Christ unifies us. And we can walk in a level of love, understanding, and agreement mm -hmm. without touching those other things. I, I travel uh, in different places, and uh, one time I'll tell you this story. I, I had a group uh, with me in Nicaragua uh, from a church of God in the United States, from the Church of God in the United States. And, of course, they're very Pentecostal people, and they believe in the you know speaking in tongues and the whole gifts of the Spirit and all that and the power. Of, that's great. I do, too. But I was invited in Nicaragua to go to this Baptist church uh -huh. to preach. So I said, great. And, they, and I told them, we're going to this Baptist church. And they're like, we're going to a Baptist church? And I'm like, yeah. Oh, so we went in there, and what do you think I preached about, Henry? Speaking in tongues. The <laughs> baptism of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so I preached about the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the Baptist church in Nicaragua. And people responded and were baptized in the Holy Spirit, spoke in tongues. The Church of God people were freaking out. How do you do that? I said, what's the big deal? You know, so if we're moved by titles, if we're moved by these divisions, uh -huh. yeah. then we respond to the divisions instead of responding to the Scripture and to what Christ has accomplished mm -hmm. by His death and resurrection. Okay, I, I say about myself, I'm a man above the walls. Mm -hmm. I'm a kingdom man. Because mm -hmm. I go above the walls. I don't... I don't see those divisions. There are many man-made divisions. I see them, but I don't respond to them. Yeah, I, I go yeah. where the Spirit sends me to go. I, I'll, and and I'm, I honor, I, I know there's certain things that are offensive. So what do I do? I share what revelation I have. I bring the message that I believe God wants me to bring. I do it in a, in a way that, that, is, uh, that will promote the kingdom and will promote the things of God. Not to offend. Not to make people yeah. angry for... For no reason, you know. So that that's that's another. I guess I sort of developing that <clears throat> that whole idea and understanding. Mm -hmm. Let me say something real quick, uh, Mitch. You know, we have to die daily, and we all have the flesh, and and all of us have issues. But now, Mitch has has matured where he has perfect love, mature love that drives out fear. Mm -hmm. So Jesus said uh, to love one another mm -hmm. as He has loved us. To accept one another, okay, as he accepts us in Christ. So it's one thing you're 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 pounding your doctrine because you're right, and you want them to know you're right, 
and you want to prove a point. But Mitch comes where he shares truth mm -hmm. in love. Mm -hmm. Most people, when they know and sense it, it's love, and you're not trying to push something down their throat because of a, you know, you're right, mm -hmm. and they're wrong, and you're going to prove it, mm -hmm. then they'll react to that. Mm -hmm. So I want to go back to love, uh, you know, Faith, hope, and love, the greatest of these is love. Though I have the ability to understand all mysteries and have not love, mm -hmm. though I have faith to remove mountains and have not love, mm -hmm. you know, I'm nothing. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, uh, God wants us to develop and to grow in Christ where we can love is he loves where his love is shed abroad in our hearts mm -hmm. so if you are a baptist and you don't believe the gifts are for today mm -hmm. that doesn't stop me from loving you in fact if you're not even a christian mm -hmm. i love you mm -hmm. in that why we're yet sinners christ did what loved, loved, loved us and died for us mm -hmm. so uh so that's the that's the key mm -hmm. you might you know, people again have to be. Here comes somebody in with with spiked hair, and and uh, you know maybe they haven't taken a bath, and and then somebody looks down on them because they're not fitting into the uh, the church politics in the way you're supposed to be as a Christian. Mm -hmm. Well, you're going to chase that person out the door. Yeah, maybe they should take a bath, right? But you love them, and you accept them, okay? Yeah, I'm sorry. So, oh, sorry. Go ahead, brother. Um, can I disagree with you theologically and still walk in unity with you? Oh, no. We ne see, never disagree with you. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'm just, I I'm just kidding. Uh, I say that because um, I'm not going to call them names, but I, I hear pastors all the time, well, we don't see everything eye to eye. Oh, we don't, yeah. Our doctor is, we can't fail it. Why, why would something like that cause a discord within pastors and leaders and churches all because of theological and doctrinal reasons? Because, how, how come we can't just still walk in unity? Yeah, good question. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, that's it. But it's, it's reality. That's the way it is. You might... You know, pre-millennial, post-millennial, pre-trip, yeah. post-millennial <laughs> trip. Uh, now, uh, is it all right to search the scriptures, yeah, sure. to study yeah. these things, and to have your view? Mm -hmm. First of all, we got to answer that. Yes. Yeah. I, I don't just agree with this pan-out the theory. Mm -hmm. I think there is truth. Now, if if you disagree with me, mm -hmm. okay, I still love you. Mm -hmm. If you are open for a nice, friendly discussion, mm -hmm. I'll do it. If you want to argue, mm -hmm. I don't want to argue. Yeah. I don't want to debate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, the foundation's wrong. Mitch just taught on this. Mm -hmm. We're taping this now. This morning, to have the kingdom authority and to walk, we still have to have the right foundation. Mm -hmm. So if you are so in love with your eschatology, and you elevate that above your relationship with Jesus and your brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. knowledge will always puff up, but love will edify. Mm, that's good. Okay? Uh -huh. And uh, uh, it's like we have a relationship with a doctrine and teaching doctrine's important. Mm -hmm. and, and that's more important than a relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's right. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. You've heard it said before, I'm sure, that we can agree to disagree. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. There are some things that are absolute. Mm -hmm. You know, the yeah. born-again experience. Right. You know, good. you talked oh, about this, this morning. Yeah. That if you confess with your mouth mm -hmm. the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, <laughs> you'll be saved. There are some things that are absolute. Jesus, yeah. he's God. He's yeah. deity. Yeah. He was born of a virgin. 
He rose from the dead. Yes, His sir. blood atones for sins. Come yeah. on, we believe in repentance. We believe in sanctification. Yeah, I There's some things. Around. Here, oh, you're come on, excited. take off. <laughs> 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 there are some things that are absolutes. They are in concrete. We're not the one that made that decision. It's what it is. But as these men of God have said, there are some things we can simply agree to disagree on. And when we're united for this cause, this great salvation, when we're united ah. for a cause, some things we just use wisdom and leave it alone. That's right. You know, when, That's when right. you know, it's, it's just good to not argue about some things. Yeah. You, you know, uh, when uh, in the Billy Graham Crusades, mm -hmm. he get because of the goal, of getting the lost saved, mm -hmm. everybody kind of unites around that. Yeah. Okay, and uh, uh, so uh, uh, what are the basics? Well, I like what you said. I mean, now if we can't the main tenets of the, the faith. main yeah. tenets of the faith, and you can't compromise those. No, that's something you can't argue. About. No, you can't. It's there, and you just gotta say okay. Mm -hmm. I believe that um, every part of the body is important. I thought about this the other day as I looked at my physical body. I need my hands. I need my feet. I need my legs. I need my arms. Kind of like what the Apostle Paul said, why would the hands say to the feet, I don't need you. Yeah. For example, um, I need that to function properly physically. But also I looked at it in a spiritual level too, how there are, as Paul says right here in Romans 12, 4 through 5, that there are many members but they do not have all the same function, but still a part of the body. Would you guys talk a little bit about that? Yeah, that's what. What did he mean when he said that? That's the other place where Romans he 12, 4 through 5. where he says that we are members one of another. That's at Romans twelve. Um, totally. This is also, uh, I guess, it's First uh, Corinthians fourteen, twelve, where he talks about the. Um, the body and, and every part having uh, grace given to it. Mm -hmm. um, in 5, verse 5. So we being many, that's the many parts, mm -hmm. are one body in Christ. Mm -hmm. And every one members one of another. Mm -hmm. that's, what you just said. that's what I said earlier. Uh -huh. See, and so um, you you might be an arm and I might be a foot. Mm -hmm. But we, are, we find our place of unity mm -hmm. not in our function, mm -hmm. but in our position. Woo. <laughs> you see, that? That's yeah. good. You see, because our position is that we're in Christ. Uh -huh. yeah. You are the arm in the body of Christ. Uh -huh. I am the foot in the body of Christ. Now, obviously, we look different. We have different purposes. Well, different... that's obvious. Yeah, obvious. <laughs> <laughs> hey, right? He just got it. But we're... <laughs> is that Social Security I'm I'm a joke? <laughs> it comes when you're 65. I'm You'll get it when you're 65. I'm anyway, but... But our function is different, but we're our location is the same. We're mm -hmm. in Christ, mm -hmm. so we're members one of another. Yeah. Praise I need God. you. I need you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I need the grace. I need the love. And that's another thing he talked about joints before. And that's that. Now we're talking Ephesians four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's power uh, provided by joints. Now mm -hmm. joints are relationships. Mm -hmm. So relationships are are uh, just. Mm -hmm. The, the picture is that where there's a joint, so where my forearm meets my bicep here, the, the elbow is the joint. Uh -huh. So the joint, because it joins those two body parts together, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a release of power that can not come individually, but can come because of the joining. Okay, That's what happens in relationship. Mm -hmm. We have friendships, friendships, uh, and I think this is what the body of Christ needs more than anything. Preachers just need to hang out together. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because we need to trust one another. Yeah, absolutely. See, we, we preachers are so uh, uh, fearful of all kinds of things. I won't oh, go into all the fears. But they're, <laughs> they're fearful of so many things. And because yeah. we don't trust one another, mm -hmm. uh, and we don't trust one another because we haven't spent time together. Mm -hmm. If we would just sit and drink coffee... And just know that you have so many children and that you have this and you've come from here and you were born over here but now you live over here. and Just just, just those common things, yeah. we would begin to see one another and then be able to trust and walk together a little bit. Amen. What, what does faith and unity have in common? 
faith. Sorry, and not faith and unity, fellowship and unity. Well, I think that it's the expression of unity. Mm -hmm. If we're going to go with the biblical uh, definition, which means we're joined together in Christ yeah. by the Spirit, then fellowship will be the expression of our unity. Uh -huh. Fellowship will be the manifestation of what already is. Mm -hmm. That's my take on it. It's you guys good. want to add anything? You want to say something? No. I, I want no. to say one more thing about this, what you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. You know, I minister in lots of different countries, and one of the things that I bring out, I, I minister to pastors a lot, is that we as local church uh, leaders, mm -hmm. we are not like little convenience stores mm -hmm. competing for the business. Mm -hmm. So that you, I see you as my competition because you're on that corner and I'm on this corner. You know, so I have to make some sale. I have to, I have to get some hot youth leader or some better worship leader or whatever to get your customers. To mm -hmm. We are, we are not in competition with one another. Mm -hmm. We serve the same yeah. God, the same Father, because we are brothers. We are of the same family, Absolutely. and we we have the same purpose. We are on the same team, and the team, the purpose of the team is to do this, to, to accomplish the same goal. So why would we fight against each other? I don't know. <laughs> well, we've had we've had the enemy try to divide us and keep us separated, instead of uh, celebrating the unity that yeah. we already have in yeah, Christ. Yeah. Celebrate it. Yeah. Celebrate it. Don't scurry around and try to make it happen. It already exists. <laughs> why? Begin to fellowship. Why is there so much competition? You got this pastor trying to out preach the other pastor. You got this choir trying to out sing the one across the street. I mean, yeah. What I mean, can that cause division? Yeah. I'll let someone else tell the, you. Uh, what we all have to do is ask the Lord to show us if we have the wrong motive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Uh, the whole kingdom concept is. Jesus is the king, mm -hmm. savior and lord to a number of things. And his theocracy, mm -hmm. his reign and rule in love and righteousness is in us. Mm -hmm. It's a spiritual kingdom. Mm -hmm. We're submitting to him, to his ways. Mm -hmm. But we also can have a calling from God and gifts. I'm talking about leaders now. Mm -hmm. And our motivation is for us and not for him. It looks the same, but it's why what why we do what we do. Okay? Even Paul said because of the, the flesh, new creation in Christ, righteousness given to him, imputed to him, he said he had to die daily. Paul said, or Jesus said, take up your cross, follow me, and die daily. So, first of all, we have to be willing. Mm -hmm. Now, if we have emotional and hurts and insecurity, Sharon and I, or we go to the same thing with Mitch. We minister to leaders and, and have been in many nations. By the way, it's much easier sometimes uh, in international places where leaders come together. They, they, they could care less sometimes about their denominational affiliation. They just love Jesus and they want to do as well, and they want to grow, and they, they, they'll work together more than sometimes, sometimes in the United States. Any identity. So if my identity is in my gifting, or my, my success is in I must have a mega church, or the biggest membership in town. I must be on TV. God can call you to be on TV, and he can call you to be a servant and steward multitudes of people. That, but that doesn't mean, you know, you're doing it for the wrong reason. In fact, you could have a storefront church and be very self-centered and do it, you know, a control freak. Mm -hmm. So we have to uh, let God kill and burn out. And, and it's not like one time we got it. So our motivation is for Christ. Remember Paul said this. He said, some preach Christ out of envy, strife, and vainglory. Mm -hmm. Now Paul was a positive. He said, 
Well, guys, I'm still going to rejoice because Christ is preached. Mm -hmm. But he also told Timothy in one location, he says, no one is like-minded because all these preachers, they're just out for their own gain, mm -hmm. for their own privilege, and not for Christ. Mm -hmm. So all of us, and that includes me, we have to make sure that so what if someone else... It, i got to say this. See, this blocks the union. This causes a disconnection uh, on a very local level. If if you're insecure, God wants to... He's healed me. He wants to heal you, uh, leader. Is that you will not let anybody in your pulpit in the church, even though they're... And especially those that are gifted and can maybe quote, unquote, if there is such a thing, preach better than you because you're jealous and you don't want them to get up there because then the people are going to look to them. See, that, all that stuff has got to die. Are you with me? That disconnects us. And then on a larger scale, it disconnects us. Uh, I used to, I don't know anymore, I mean, go to ministerial meetings and I'm like, I'm for anything that, that helps. But uh, the first thing they'd ask you is, how many are you running in your Sunday school? I mean, rather than, Larry, how are you doing? How's your wife? How's your family? Right? Well, no. How many are you running? How big is your church? How big is your budget? Well, immediately you know. They're basing this whole success on, on this stuff. And see, so so we then we aren't kingdom-minded. Do you follow me? Yeah, sir. There's something I want to add yeah. to that last question. Mm. You, you basically asked how um, unity and fellowship are related. Um, let me say this, and I feel like I need to say it in the day that we're living in, because the base of what we call ministry yeah. is growing in, in a not-so-good way. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of... Uh, Interfaithism, some yeah. people call it. It's it's like universalism. Yeah, uh, it's becoming mainstream in our country today. And uh, I had someone come to me one time when I was attending Bible college, and I was a very educated person. And I worked my way through college, so I was on the job. And they came up with a question, and they asked me. They said, "Do you embrace God bigger than Christianity?" And I said. Absolutely not. I don't embrace it bigger than Christ. And this person said, well, you have to admit that the Jesus you serve was very open-minded, they said. <laughs> and I said, according to the scriptures, he wasn't. Now, now listen, Acts 4.12 says that there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Amen. So it's important to know that the fellowship we're talking about here today is in Christ. It's in Christ. There's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus was not open-minded. He said, straight <laughs> is the gate and narrow is the path yeah, that amen. leads unto That's life, right. Right. and few there be that yes. find it. Yeah, amen. Yeah. He said, I am the door into the sheepfold. Right. And anyone that comes in any other way, the same as a thief and a robber. So it's important that we know today that listen, our fellowship is in Christ. The yeah. basic tenets of the faith, we Amen. have to embrace them. Yes. We have to believe them. We have to live them. Because in these last days that we're living in, we're going to see more and more stuff embraced. Yeah. And listen, just because it's called the church doesn't mean it is yeah. the church. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. Good work. That's awesome. Um, my last question I want to ask, I love how you was talking about Competition, yeah. preachers think they're going to outdo this one and all that. Is it possible to be in ministry uh, but with the wrong motives? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does a shark like a snack? <laughs> Does a dog want a bone? Uh -huh. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and you can have a mixture uh, uh, because in my own life, I mean, uh, 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 in the early days of my ministry, I could preach, I could teach, you know, the gifts of the Spirit would operate. Mm -hmm. But again, I go back to I was getting my acceptance, mm -hmm. my approval by what I did. Mm -hmm. I was doing rather than being. Mm -hmm. And so my motives uh, were wrong. 
And not that I've reached perfection, but God is showing me and I've repented and I've been healed. You know, that was back when I was younger. Because I, I, uh, I was uh, uh, performance oriented. That means I performed so I would be liked. I would be accepted. Mm -hmm. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. See, the, these things, we, we, you know, we'll never have the practical side of unity when we have these hurts and these shortcomings mm -hmm. in us. God, by the way, uh, uh, God, if you're a leader or even a Christian, the Lord loves you so much. And he wants to heal you where you get your identity and your acceptance because you're a son, which Mitch preached on. Mm -hmm. Not because you have the biggest church in town. Not because you're, you're gifted, but because you're a son. Mm -hmm. And the daughters are sons too. That's where it's at. God, if God has accepted you, you don't have to perform for his love. And he makes you righteous in his son. Therefore, you're accepted in the beloved, period. But you can have a paradigm. So God wants to heal. And I pray right now. Hear me if I may. Yeah, go ahead. May I do that? And you guys, uh, we pray for anyone watching that the Spirit of God has opened their mind and is showing up. Maybe even showing them things we haven't even talked about. But we pray for the healing, delivering power of Jesus Christ to set you free. And for revelation of who you are in Christ. And as Mitch talked about even this morning in this conference, that it's already been done. He redeemed you. He shed his blood for you. I pray for leaders that have that they that have had an outward appearance of unity, but inwardly they're, they're seeking approval or selfish ambition. I pray, oh, oh, Father, and, and 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 I uh, consider my own self, knowing that in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. And I'm only righteous in you. So I pray this prayer, not out of a condescending thing, but I pray it from the power and the authority of Jesus Christ uh, that, be, that leaders uh, come into the redemption that Jesus paid for you. And whether it's not you, you are accepted and you are loved, because God loves you and you're his son.